great pleasures that, that I found from doing this album is uh, hearing all these contemporary poets that I really wasn't familiar with. And I oh. wasn't, didn't, wasn't that familiar with her. Although I saw her name on The New Yorker and knew it. And you know who that is? Yes, she used to, she used to Come write. Come on in. Come on in. Hey, Georgia Serving is here. Hello. Hello. I'm okay, Michelle. Well, let's go in there Hi. for a second. We're doing a little interview. Come and sit down and relax. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. All right, we're still rolling. So one of the great pleasures of, for me is um, discovering these contemporary poems who I really wasn't that aware of. Tell me about uh, Ms. Carr. Well, I got turned on to her by a friend of mine. She writes, I mean, primarily she considered herself a poet, but I think most people sort of found out about her through these memoirs that she's written. She wrote one several years ago called The Liar's Club. Delicious. If you haven't read that one, and her most recent one is called Lit equally as great. She's so funny and self-deprecating and she gets herself into these situations and you're thinking, oh please, please, no, no, and she's just funny and... And so anyway, I knew she'd written a lot of poetry, so I ran out and got that. She has two or three books of poems as well. Well, no, she's in the New Yorker quite a bit. Yeah. And in fact, this yeah. was in the New Yorker. Well, what do you think the difference is between her, her, her poetry and her prose? I'll tell you what, what I love about her poetry, it's very similar to her prose in the fact that she's still... I'm losing. Oh, that's all right. Oh, that's we'll all right. i have to do that one again. That's all right. No, all we'll right. do the first bit, right? Yeah, don't we get the first one? We'll just go that bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. So let's pick it up with what you like about her poetry. Um, I started to say I, I admire her, po her poetry because it is similar in style, in fact, and in content to a lot of her prose. Still self-deprecating, still always sort of um, searching for, you know, truths and self. And what's also so great about her just in general as a writer, she's so fearless. She lays her story, soul, life out onto, in whatever, in her poetry or her prose, and it's um, heartbreaking and funny and really, really good. And as, a, as an actress, when you picked this poem, did you respond to something? Did you want to add a new character to this? Did you want to be her? What, what were you playing when you were, when you were reading the, the poetry? Well, this is embarrassing to sort of say, but I get that poem in a big way. <laughs> <laughs> I get that poem. I get it. I there is a song that was written. Uh, I, I can remember Maureen McGovern sang it years and years ago. Um, if I had changed a single day, what, what went amiss or went astray, you know, it would never. I'd never have found my way to you. In other words, was what the song is. And to me, that's what that's what resonates in that poem. Sure, there's some stuff I would change, and hmm, now I look back on it, and it's funny, and I can't believe I sort of lived through it all. But if I had done one di thing differently. I wouldn't be here now, so, for me. There is a poem in here that I, that I love so, and I really wanted to do. I could not get through this thing without sobbing. I couldn't, I couldn't. I have a 10-year-old, and, and, it, and it was a poem she wrote about her 16-year-old boy, and kind of about them turning into a man and growing up and letting go, which is, and so I can't read this poem. Poem. Every time I tried to get through it, I was like, uh, I couldn't get through the thing. So I thought, I can't read that. I can't read it. I don't think I could get through it. Well, great. It's beautiful. That's fantastic. Good. Um, one last thing before we go. If you would be so kind as to look into the camera and mm -hmm. say the word poetry, that would be great. Poetry.